Welcome back to Fundamentals Friday. Last week, we talked about light sources, shadows, where to place your shadows. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to shadow using markers. I have a list of all the markers used in this video in the description box. The main method would be to lay down your base color, this random uh, rosy pink, and to take a darker shade of that color to apply the shadows. And sometimes I take the base color, the first color I used, and soften the edges of the shadow with it. Often I like to use actually three different shades of the same color because I like to have two different values of shadow. Regular shadow and then a slightly more intense, darker shadow in the center of the shadow. So base color all over, take a slightly darker green, put in my shadows along one side of that cone, you know, skinny little triangle on top of the skinny little triangle. And then to take a slightly bluer, slightly darker green and put in a tiny bit in the center of the first shadow to get that more 3D, more intense, more developed look. Sometimes I want to highlight as well. And one of the ways to do that is to leave the white of the paper. And if I want softer edges of a highlight, I will start by taking a colorless blender and, well, coloring, sort of, the section I want the highlight to sit. That highlight will sit in the opposite section of where the shadow sits. So if the shadow is on the bottom, the highlight's on the top. If the, if the shadow is on the left, the highlight is on the right, and so forth. So I'll take my colorless blender, I'll rub it along the area I want the highlight, and before the colorless blender has a chance to dry too much, I will take my base color and draw marker around it along the edges, you know, overlapping the edges so that I can kind of blend the edges together. I will take my colorless blender again and run it over so that I'm softening the edges. I'm bringing a little bit of that orange into my highlight. You know, not enough to really make it orange. It still looks super bright and much lighter than the orange. And always remember to wipe off excess color off your colorless blender so that you can keep using it with other colors. And now I'm going back with a darker orange to add my shadows. And now I have three values and it looks like I have a really glossy orange column. And this will be a nice technique to use on shiny fabrics. Most of the time when I am using markers, I use a darker color to shadow and not with grays. So with the orange, I use a darker orange to shadow. With the pink, I used a darker pink, etc. I like to retain the brightness of the color by using the darker color to shadow instead of grays. I definitely do use grays on certain uh, kinds of renderings. For example, if I have a color that is a little bit duller, like this blue is a little bit bright and I could either shadow it with a dull blue or I could shadow it with gray. I use gray when I want it more toned down. I want the overall effect to be more muted. However, whenever you do use grays, 
there are a lot of grays out there, okay? Not all grays are created equal, and you need to match the gray with your base color. Like I'm using all these cool grays in this demo, and cool grays work great with the blue. But look how it looks with the orange. It looks greenish now, like the shadows look green. They don't look nice, okay? Here's another cool blue, still making the orange shadows look green. So if you want to shadow the orange with gray and kind of, I would use grays that have a more yellowy, warmer undertone to them. With this pink cone, I'm putting the previous sort of separate skills and putting them all together to create a cone that has the most values, like the whitest whites and the darkest shadows, so that you can see how complex and rendered you can get, like really push it so that it looks richer. Okay. When I'm doing really fast design sketches, sometimes I don't even shadow. I just lay down the base color. Sometimes I will put in one layer of shadow. I don't really do this until I get to the final rendering stage of a project where I will go all out and make sure that I've got smooth transitions, I've got multiple shadows, and I'm really punching up the highlights, you know, creating highlights with a colorless blender and then going back in with a white marker if I have something that's super duper shiny you know, vinyl, uh, clear vinyl was really huge last year. So all those clear vinyl things, I would make sure I would punch in with white marker, white gel pen, right? Things like that. Lay down your colorless blender in the highlight areas, making, you know, coloring a wider patch so that you can overlap the colorless blender with your lightest color so that you're getting a little bit of that mixture blend. Sometimes I take the darkest shadow color and lay it down first and then I put in a in between a softer shadow color so that I can kind of blend out and blend together the shadow tones so they look more harmonious and the edges look a little bit more soft taking that colorless blender and just kind of blending everything together nicely so that everything just looks more blended. Let's see how many times I could say the word blended in this video. <laughs> so there's my shiny pink cone with all the values. And then if I wanted it super shiny, I can either take a white pencil and create highlights on top now, when you do this, make sure that your marker is 100% dry. Anytime you want to put dry media light color pencil on top of paint or marker, you really want to make sure that that base is super dry. Otherwise, you're just going to make this gross mess. Here's that white marker I talked about before. And if you want it to, something to look super shiny, I would punch that in there. You know, you can use a little bit of an opaque white paint and a small brush. Even on marker paper, you can do this because it's such a tiny bit of paint and it doesn't have a whole lot of water in it to buckle these thin marker papers. So yeah, just take a little white paint, a little white marker like the Faber-Castell white marker and just drop in a super shiny highlight. And here I'm just putting together a little circle skirt illustration to show you guys how I apply all the techniques I just went over onto a garment. You know, the, the skills I teach in my Fundamentals Fridays videos are for everyone, not just for clothing designers or fashion illustrators, but you know, it's kind of nice to see how it looks 
on something other than basic shapes. <laughs> so I'm taking, uh, what is this, Prismacolor Muted Turquoise and dropping in color all across the whole skirt. And then I'm taking Copic Cool Gray series. What is this, C4? Yeah, C4, and dropping in the first layer of shadows. You can refer to my first Shading Basics video for how I work out the placement of my shadows. I'm not gonna repeat myself here. I'm trying to keep these videos short and to the point. <laughs> And now I'm taking uh, C5 in the same Copic Cool Gray series to put in more intense shadows. Now I'm just gonna take a pencil and, you know, punch out the outline of the skirt. And, and yeah, I'm using a regular non-mechanical pencil. Y'all gave me so much grief in the last video. It was hilarious. I laughed so hard. I didn't even know you guys would care. But <laughs> this is a Faber-Cassell 9000 Jumbo regular graphite, just a thicker barrel pencil. It's really nice. The lead is nice. I like the hexagonal barrels. I like how they feel in my hand. That's the kind that has the six sides, not just the round barrel. And I don't know, something about the lead being thicker because the barrel is thicker. I don't have to sharpen it as often. And it's easy to sharpen. So yeah, I really like this pencil. <laughs> Check the info box below if you have questions. If your answer is not there, leave me comments. Leave me all the comments and I will get to them as soon as I can. Hit the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful for you. And please share, subscribe, and practice. More than anything, go practice. Practice your skills on small, simple shapes like I did in this video. And then apply them to the kind of illustrations that you do. Hashtag drawing with Zoe Hung on Instagram and show me what you've been working on. All right? And I will see you all in the next video.